this episode, we're going to be adding the AI. And before we do add the AI, I'm going to do a bit of bug fixes. So first, if we go to our tank, you may notice I only have one box collider. And I just removed the other and just extreme and just moved it downwards with uh, the edit bounding volume button. And now it's just one big collider. So one problem I found in the last episode is let's say we flip the player 180 degrees upside down. And, and then we press play. Then as you see here. Our player is essentially completely stranded. So the way I found to fix this is to open automatic center mass and make it some number like a minus five. And, uh, and don't worry if it doesn't work here. We will make it work. The reason why it doesn't work is because of the collider. It is just too big to work. So the way to fix this is we're gonna change the collider you can remove the box collider and we can make a new folder called colliders. Uh, blend open now. I'm going to go add mesh and add a cube. And if you're wondering what I'm doing here is I'm just going to kind of outline the body of the tank. So I'm just going to add a cube and don't worry if it's not uh, perfect. It doesn't really matter because the player doesn't actually see any of this. We're just going to, this is just going to be the collider. So we can just do something like this. Uh, we can move it like this, like this, and we can even extend it. Nice, now we have our collider, and we can extrude it out even more. And then rotate, and then we can select this part and uh, choose a median point as the how we rotate. We can rotate it like this, and we can do the exact same thing again. And now, if we check it out, it's a tiny bit. Uh, broken so but if we just hide the actual tank it is okay it's a tiny bit broken I might undo a bit of it so maybe something like this undo it let's just make it straight again and now we have we should end up with something like this you can name this tank underscore collider and then we can go in and item we can apply all transform and we can go file export fbx and we're going to choose apply transform and I'm in the correct uh, in the correct directory we're going to name this tank underscore collider make sure you have selected objects enabled and export FBX. Now if we open Unity, we have our C now and we can open colliders and we have our full tank collider. Uh, I forgot to do something so we can open Blend again and we can uh, select it, go add and we in edit mode by the way and we can just extend it out a bit like this <laughs> just like this and now we have our uh, top part of our tank, the turret. We're not going to extend it too much. Uh, it's just like a very a rough base for the turret. And just like this. And now if we just bevel this. Now we can open, uh, now we can export it. And I'll just export it. Okay, I exported it to Unity now. We're going to open our tank. We're going to go uh, create empty and we're going to name it Collider. Add components. We're going to add a mesh collider and then we can open our uh, model and drag it in. Uh, there we go. 
and now we have our tank collider. Now the reason why you can't see it is if we open convex and now you can actually see it. It looks a tiny bit strange but that's because it's at a bad rotation. So I believe it's minus 90 degrees, we need to rotate it. And there we go. I think that's a bit better. And uh, now if we open our tank, uh, we must make sure there are no box sliders. And by the way, if you can't see it, then make sure you have gizmos enabled. Otherwise, you might not be able to see uh, the actual tank. Uh, sorry, the collider. So if we now press play, hopefully it should work. And as you can see, yay, it works. Okay. And it's doing something a bit strange. Ooh, I think that needs to be fixed. So let's try and make it instead of minus 5, minus 1. Maybe it's a bit too much, minus 5. Let's see it. And... Yeah, I think that's fine. Minus 1 is great. Now we have... Uh, we want to select... Go to our prefabs and select our uh, building and we're going to a uh, building our border wall and our wall we're going to remove the rigid body of it and that's gone now and if we open our rigid body of our tank we can even make it a bit heavier if you want you know what one's fine for now because it's not having any problems and you go to my tank flip it the right way up and then we can go over it and apply all and now we have applied our tank, so it's in the prefabs folder. We can then go right click, uh, we can select our tank, and we can go command D, and this will duplicate it. And we can rename this from tank1 to enemy underscore tank. This will be our future enemy tank. We're going to remove the player inputs and the player controller off it, but everything else can be left to the same. We're then going to make another material, and this is going to be a copy of base color, and this is going to be called enemy underscore base color. We can make this red for now. You could even make it orange if you wanted. I'll make it red, and we can drag it in there because this will be changed later on. And uh, now we have our enemy tank. We can then uh, right click on it, prefab, unpack completely, go to our prefabs folder and drag it in. Now we need to, uh, whoops, let's remove components on this. Uh, next we can go uh, window, package manager, and we're going to uh, just search in Unity registry, AI. We want to look for AI navigation. We're going to click install. And it's just going to install all the packages here. And it is nearly done. And now it's done. Uh, don't worry about this. We can just clear it. We can select our enemy tank, add components, nav mesh agents. And we can then uh, go to our agents uh, type. Uh, we can leave that humanoid just temporarily. We can click on our enemy tank. We can make a new, uh, before we make a new script actually, let's select our terrain, add components, and nav mesh, and this will be nav mesh surface. And we're now going to click on the agent type and open agent settings. Uh, doc, uh, let's uh, pin it to our inspector area. New agents, this will be called enemy. And everything can be left the same for now. We could change it later though. Uh, we're going to make the agent type enemy and select our tank and make it enemy. We can then click bake. And now all, uh, most of your terrain at the very least should be this blue color and if you can't see that then uh, make sure you selected your terrain 
And if we click AI navigation, this new little pop up here, let's actually just uh, make it all the same window, just make, let us see a bit more. And if we go to our scene, open AI navigation, uh, then you want to click show nav mesh. Uh, let's enable gizmos as well. Make sure you have that enabled, otherwise you won't be able to see it. We can, uh, now we have our terrain all baked. Uh, we can uh, click on our enemy tank, add components, and we're going to uh, make a new script called enemy. Create an ad. We're going to uh, just let it complete. Go assets folder and drag in our enemy to the scripts folder. Let's wait for it to compile and we can open our enemy script. Now it's open, we can delete everything inside it. Add another using, uh, this will be using unity engine.ai. And we can then go private. This will be the nav mesh agent agent and then we can have another private transform target this will be where it uh, tries to go and i'm not going to name play in case you want to target it to anywhere else you can change it if you want even in real time you can change it in the start folder we are in the start uh, function or method actually sorry uh, we're going to go set uh, these, so agent is equal to get component nav mesh agent. And in the target, we're going to make that the player. You can make it whatever place, uh, wherever you want. You can even make it a vector 3 instead of a transform. But I'm going to make it target because we need to track an object. We're going to go target is equal to game object dot find game object not objects there's a big difference because one will turn a, a game object other will turn a game object array or a list and we go into the tag we're going to input is player and then dot transform now we're going to make an update and we're going to go agent dot uh, set destination we can give it a vector three, which is the target, and we'll just give it our target dot position. Then if we, uh, we've we done the script, we can open uh, Unity. It is downloading. We can select our tank and add a tag to our tank, which is player, and make sure the enemy tank is still untagged. If we now press play, uh, what should happen, uh, let's hope it works, and yes it tries to go towards the player. And no matter where you go, let's say we pause it, and the player, uh, let's say, moves all the way here, and uh, let's say it moves all the way here, if we press play, the enemy tank will try and go the shortest route it can towards the player. So if we uh, select the tag, it is going to, uh, you can actually see where it's trying to go. There's sometimes a red line. Well, it's having a tiny bit of trouble getting up this hill. Okay, I just found a nice way to do it. Essentially, I click on the enemy tank, click on the collider, and I choose, uh, I believe it is layer overrides, yes. and exclude uh, layers I believe it is uh, I think it's this and we can just choose exclude the default layer so if we press play uh, this should work uh, let's test it and now I can drive up perfectly uh, fine that is great if we click on the enemy tank, one last thing, I increased the speed to 5, so it's just a bit faster. I hope you enjoyed this episode. In the next episode, we will be adding shooting to the game. So I'm excited for that, I hope you are. Uh, please subscribe and like the video, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!